In this video, I'm going to try beat Terraria on its secret Drunk Seed world. This altered version of a normal world makes heaps of changes, some really annoying and some not so much. Will I be able to beat the Moon Lord in time, or will this weird world generation stop me? Make sure to watch to the end to find out. To start off, like always, I spawned in and immediately started chopping down trees. But to my surprise, we spawned in a crimson biome? This is just one of the few things that can happen in the Drunk Seeds world. Running away from spawn, I almost died. I was building bridges in hopes of avoiding the crimson enemies from below. Making over the frozen lake, I decided to set up my new home in the snow biome, away from the crimson's enemies. I built up an NPC house and went exploring, to my death. After respawning, I dug down and made a little fort to stay the night. I crafted snowballs to hurl at the enemies and get some loot. Now it's time for day two. When the sun came up, I decided to do some more adventuring. I found a nice cave entrance and decided to check it out. Avoiding those crimson spider things and almost dying again, I managed to score myself a cloud in a bottle. After which, I was quickly humbled by a boulder, crushing my body and my hopes and dreams. I spent the rest of the day exploring the left side of the world, discovering the jungle right next to the snow biome which never happens in a normal world. Usually, the snow and jungle spawn on either side of the world. I also went mining, got some ores, and found an ice blade, which was a huge upgrade. Dying again, I got sent back to spawn, but this was a good time to show off just how good this ice blade was in keeping me alive and my keyboard intact. I spent the rest of the night making my base more suitable with a furnace, crafting bench, and an anvil. Starting us off again a little more powerfully, I hit up the jungle for some sweet loot. My ice blade was making quick work of the hell spawn, I mean jungle bats. I found an aglet on a surface chest as well as a living tree, which had a finch star and a sunflower minecart. After this, I did some more exploring and found the ocean, which had some nice ocean chests for us. I also found an underground living jungle tree, which was guarded by my stupidity. At my base, I was swarmed by enemies, which I dealt with, and then continued to work on my base's aesthetics. Weirdly enough, the party girl moved in, so I decided I was going to sell some stuff for some extra money. The rest of this day was spent organizing some chests, going back into the jungle, and seeing what was inside the living tree, which was a very nice boomstick, an awesome upgrade early game. Starting off strong, I took a teleportation potion and ended up in the underground desert, the little worst place to be in any stage of the game. I checked it out a bit and died again. After crafting a room and bed for myself and two other NPC houses, I upgraded my pickaxe to a shiny new lead one. I went back into the mine to collect more ores. I came across an ice chest which had a boomerang that I didn't want, but insanely after this I found another two ice chests right next to each other, with one containing some ice skates, another few chests, a mushroom biome and some bomb excavation later, I reached hell, only to realize the entire floor is quite literally lava. Back at base, I took the time to fix my inventory and add some more chests to my house. After all this, with a grab potion in hand, it was time to explore the sky islands. Making my way up there, I got a pair of wings, a balloon, and a star fury. I built another NPC house and started bombing a hill for some room to build an arena. I spent a good majority of the day flooding out this area and building platforms. After a sudden blood moon, I tried to light up my arena with torches and then build a small pit to afk the rest of the night from the blood moon i got a money trough and a bunch of money i again sorted out my inventory and built npc homes in the jungle and the beach heading home i noticed we had a traveling merchant who i bought a very nice gi from i then went exploring to the right found a cave and a gnome which i helped to the surface and collected finding the desert to the right i built up some more housing for the arms dealer and nurse to move into a bit more to the right was a very strange brown tree which led us straight to the dungeon underground Again, something this seed likes to do, make no sense whatsoever. I scored myself an alchemy table, I think by pure luck, and made my way home. Sorting my inventory out and upgrading my base yet again, I dug out a huge area for me to expand the base into. With my new storage system built, I made a bit of a compact crafting area and went spelunking while making a halivator. I found a heart crystal, another ice chest, a beehive, and three jungle chests which spawned right next to each other again. I have no idea if it's the world's fault or dumb luck, but anyways, I didn't find anything too useful apart from the staff of regrowth. I then spent the rest of this day in the mines getting a ton of loot like heart crystals, Hermes boots and more. After the mining trip, I sorted my loot out and equipped my new boots. I also went ahead and made a room above my arena for me to respawn, slash put the nurse in. I also extended my arena with ice to get some extra speed with my ice boots. I also got some buffs ready for the Eye of Cthulhu, the first boss in our long journey. 
After doing some more things waiting for nightfall, it was showtime. Or so I thought. As usual, Terraria is straight trolling and we got a blood moon instead. So back to AFKing it was. While waiting for nightfall again, I headed to the dungeon to farm for some more bones pre Skeletron. Now usually the enemies don't spawn, but because the world gen is so messed up, I was able to get a bunch for the Necro armor set. After getting the cobwebs and bones, I could craft a powerful ranger armor set that would carry us to the wall of flesh. Once nighttime came, it was showtime. I buffed up and prepared for the Eye of Cthulhu. Unfortunately, we were too powerful with the Necro set and Boomstick that we absolutely destroyed it. The bag dropped us the Shield of Cthulhu, arguably the best accessory in the game, lasting me the entire playthrough. That's how good it is. I then ran over to the Crimson with bombs to destroy some hearts. I also quickly made up an arena for the Brain of Cthulhu, who was up next. With everything set, I headed back into the Crimson to face the Brain. The first phase was pretty tough in the tight space, but I managed to pull through. Using the minimap strategy, the second phase was a breeze, and we defeated him in no time. Back at the base, I crafted myself a Deathbringer pickaxe and some extra tools. I then went straight to beating another Eye of Cthulhu for fun, since I had a spawner. I collected some clay and crafted up some pots, and made a small herb farm as well as further expanding my halivator. While down here, I collected obsidian, which will come in useful for making hellstone and an obsidian skull. I then went back to hell to get a hellforge. Back to the surface, I go to the desert and move the nurse in to increase the arms dealer's happiness. I also explore the underground desert in hopes of finding a chisel, but no luck. I go back home and craft an obsidian skin potion to get hellstone with. I go get as much as I can before my potion runs out. Using my newly acquired hellstone, I craft a molten fury, a really powerful pre-hard mode option, as well as an imp staff and a new pickaxe. Heading into the underground jungle, I did a bit of exploration while collecting jungle spores. I found an anklet of the wind here as well as the jungle temple's entrance. Also, the temple's painted green for some reason. Just another thing the drunk seed does, I guess. After finding a hive, I carefully placed down some torches and headed back before it was too late. I then AFK'd the rest of the blood moon. When morning came, I went to the dryad to purchase some sunflowers, as I'd be needing those for the next boss arena. I also went ahead and grabbed some buffs. I spent the next few days struggling to make the arena for Queen Bee, as there was just so many enemies spawning. I also managed to cause this mishap. <clears throat> Whoops. <sighs> After managing to finish the arena, it was Queen Bee time. Half the struggle was dealing with the jungle enemies, and after getting critically low and barely surviving because of the brain of confusion coming in clutch, I was able to defeat the Queen Bee. This will also give us the Witch Doctor, which will come in super handy for hard mode. I also decided to build a small life root farm ahead of time, so by the time we get into hard mode, it's all ready. After sorting everything out, I crafted a bunch of rails, as we were going to create a scale rail system to get around the world faster. After dying to harpies more times than I could count on two hands, I finished it up on both sides. Days 30 to 32 were spent AFK as I was waiting for the goblin invasion. Since I had all the prerequisites, it made no sense as to why I wasn't getting one to occur. Until I realized, you have to destroy the heart slash orb of the main world evil to get it to trigger. Since I had only broken hearts in the underground crimson, I didn't meet all the prerequisites. So after getting some more heart crystals, I went into the corruption to destroy some orbs. I also explored the underground mushroom biome and found some more life crystals. Now it's time for the goblin invasion. Beating it will give us the goblin tinkerer, which sells the tinkerer's workshop, an invaluable tool throughout most of pre-hard mode and all of hard mode. After beating the event, I went straight to the underground to look for the money hungry goblin. I bought the workshop and the rocket boots from him and raced back home to combine my gear. I spent the rest of this day building a bridge underneath my sky rail to catch fallen stars, which I'm going to need for the wall of flesh. I spent the night looking for fallen stars. I also went ahead and added stuff around my base to make it more pleasing and look cooler, as well as going to the tavern keep to buy the eternal a crystal, as I wanted to give the Old Ones Army event a try before it was hard mode, which went great as planned. Well, after trying it again, this time with a bit of cheese, and I was easily able to defeat the event. I was feeling prepared for the Wall of Flesh, so off to hell I went. I still needed a voodoo doll, so I spent a while looking for a demon to spawn, but eventually I got the spawner, and it was time for the Wall of Flesh. It was a fairly easy and straightforward battle. The lava actually gave us an advantage, saving time so we didn't have to build a hell bridge. With hard mode underway, it was time to get better gear, as the necro armor won't cut it. After beating the wall of flesh and opening his bag, he dropped a nice little hat that I put on a mannequin to remind myself of his defeat. 
I also grabbed some fences and tried to make the bridge a little nicer. On my way to the jungle, a wyvern attacked me, which I made short work of with my Molten Fury bow. And since I had defeated the Queen Bee, this is where the Witch Doctor comes into play. For one Platinum, you can buy the Leaf Wings as an awesome upgrade right at the start of hard mode. Quickly, I also went into the Underground Crimson and Corruption to destroy as many altars as I could to get all the hard mode ores. The world was blessed with Cobalt, Mithril, Adamantite, Palladium, Ocalium, and Titanium. It was a close call with all the wraiths surrounding me, but I recalled home and it was fine. Getting my buffs ready for a mining trip, it was time to get the hard mode ores. I only needed to get 45 Cobalt ore to craft a drill. After doing that, I went back down in search of Mithril, which this time I needed 60 ore, which I got only to realize I forgot to factor in a Mithril anvil, so going back I collected another 80. Now all I had to do was get enough adamantite for an armor set and weapons. So I grabbed one more spelunker and went underground one last time. I also came across a very nice mushroom biome where I managed to get a magic quiver, which is awesome as it makes our arrows stronger and faster. I can't remember which enemy dropped it, but I also got a mechanical skull. Skeletron Prime was going to be our first target, and after blowing up the biome and digging it out, I had a nice flat area to farm souls of light in, as this mushroom biome was paired with a hallowed one. Back at base, I crafted up some adamantite bars and made some armor, and realized I didn't have enough. So mining again, I also went into the underground jungle too, simultaneously looking for some life fruits, which I I didn't realize yet, but I forgot that life fruit only grows after one mechanical boss is defeated. Anyway, after coming home, I crafted some adamantite pants and a repeater, which is a huge upgrade and will get us through our first mechanical boss. I spent the night clearing away a sky island so we don't have to bump into it when we're fighting prime, because my strategy involves using a gravitation potion and we can't have anything get in the way. After everything was prepared, it was showtime! I buffed up and had a very tough battle. Usually the twins are destroyers first, but since I was too lazy to make a summoner, I challenged Prime. While I was fighting a Wyvern spawn, but it wasn't too much trouble. I developed a nice loop pattern around him and was doing well at dodging all the attacks. I got really low health at the end and almost died, but we did it. With the Hello Bars, I crafted a Super Star Cannon, which will be vital in beating the Destroyer, and a Hello Repeater. On the morning of this day, we had the Steampunker move in. I also decided it's about time we face the normal Skeletron too, so I expanded the tree to be a bit wider so I couldn't get caught as I fly up and out of it. That night, I went ahead and summoned him. It was a very easy win, as I got to test out my new weapons, which obliterated his health. I also went ahead and corrupted the right side beach so we could get Dark Shards. They only drop from Dark Mummies that spawn on Corrupt Sand. Using them, we can craft a good early hard mode gun, the Onyx Blaster. I also quickly raided the dungeon and found the mechanic, a Cobalt Shield and a Water Candle. I crafted an Obsidian Shield and headed back to the ocean. Using my Water Candle to increase spawn rates, I farmed the mummies and found the Angler just chilling. I also got a Pirate Map, which spawns the Pirate Invasion. I headed to the Underworld to farm Souls of Night as well, since the closer you get to Hell, the more likely it is for enemies to drop souls. I also went to the desert to get the shotgun from the Arms Dealer, and then went back home and created the Onyx Blaster. To help with generally everything, I bought a Crystal Ball from the Wizard, an Endless Musket Pouch, and an Endless Quiver. I quickly crafted up 4 stacks of arrows and went back to the Arms Dealer to buy 4 stacks of ammo. These items allow me to have infinite ammo of just the original types, which is still really, really awesome and a great quality of life feature. Since we're preparing for the next mech fight, I wanted to get more life fruit, so I spent the day doing some exploring in the underground jungle. The base was starting to get really bland, and my NPCs were getting a bit claustrophobic, so it was time to do some building. I wasn't really sure what I wanted this house to look like. I didn't even have reference, but I was just messing around. I didn't really like what I started off with, but through some trial and error, I got it looking much better. I also added some details like windows, tables, and an angel statue. I also went ahead and painted all the wood to make it match up, and I was really happy with how it turned out. So I built a couple more for the other villages. I got some more life fruit for my life fruit farm and expanded it a little bit. I also went ahead and checked the jungle for any more that I could find. Going back to my base, the mechanic finally sold the snow pylon, so now I could actually use the pylons I set up in the other biomes. I also went ahead and farmed my pots and made some more buffs. I spent the rest of this night getting as many stars as I could, as it will decimate the destroyer when we fight him. I decided I was going to revisit the Old Ones army event to see if we could get any more Defenders medals, but instead I got destroyed. I spent the rest of this day finishing up all my preparations, and when it was night time, we were ready. The start of this fight went really well, as I took around one third of his health bar using the Super Star Shooter on the clumped up part of his body. But this spawned a heap of probes, and I had to flee before things got too dangerous. A white man also wanted to say hello while I was fighting him, because of course, why not? It got really close at the end because I was a little too confident in my win, and I got hit by the head, but I clutched it out and won the battle. 
Next up were the twins, so I grabbed more potions and reforged my superstar shooter. The next day, it was straight onto the twins. This fight went pretty smooth. As I used my grab potion to keep my distance, I also made sure to take out spasmatism before retinazer to avoid too many projectiles. This way, I could focus on more on dodging. The fight went quick, and after I defeated them, the jungle grew restless, meaning Plantera's bulbs will start sporting. So she's next in line to be defeated. Back at my base, I crafted a mechanical minecart, which will be really useful for traveling across the world at high speeds. I also went down to hell to collect some souls of night and let a wall of flesh spawn, which I almost died to because of the red devil, but we killed the wall of flesh and got some extra loot. With 87 bombs in hand, I went to the underground jungle. I was going to clear out an arena for Plantera, the key to make a good arena here is to make it really, really big, as she shoots a lot of projectiles, and you want to try running in circles around her. I also made the Drax, which can mine Chlorophyte, which will be the next armor we jump to. So I also made sure to dig up Chlorophyte while I was down in the jungle. I decided to have a rematch with Queen Bee while I was down there, and showed her who's boss. At base, using my Chlorophyte, I made a helmet and chest plate, but didn't have enough of the leggings again. So I ended up making Chlorophyte arrows, which I had an assumption were bad, but I figured I'll try them since I had pretty terrible ammo. And since we were going to be in an underground arena, the arrows will ricochet and deal extra damage to Plantera anyways. I went back to the jungle and mined a bit more to get enough of the leggings, and I also got a tattered B-Wing. So I made the B-Wings with some souls of flight. I didn't really like how they looked though, so I didn't use them. Back at the arena, I was lighting it up with some torches and adding some final touches. I also remade my small lava pit slash semi-AFK farm area near my arena. This was because I wanted to do the pirate invasion. Fun fact, you can pretty much AFK all of this invasion, apart from when you kill a captain. So this invasion was really easy. Somehow, I got really lucky and got a coin gun, two cutlasses, a diamond ring, and a pirate star. I was a little shocked, but anyways, I sold all my loot and got a bunch of money. When I went back to my life fruit farm, I saw that a plantera bulb spawned in it, which will come in handy. I also decorated my base with some weapon racks to showcase my cool ranged weapons. I also made my chest area look much nicer with matching chests. I also came to the realization that I could kill Fishron and get the Tsunami, which will last me up until Moonlord. So, I went to the mechanic to buy different wrenches, since I was going to make my Fishron arena have some wiring. So I made the grand design and bought some teleporters from the Steampunker, and headed to the ocean. I covered the ocean with asphalt. Now this is actually really important as Fishron is really fast and a great way to escape him involves moving at high speeds. At the corners of the arena, I put teleporters down. These will help me escape Fishron's projectiles and his dash attacks much, much easier. So I wired them up to the platform above, and this is how they work. Next up, I needed a truffle worm, so a quick visit to the mushroom biome, and we found one straight away. I grabbed my buffs, and off to the ocean it was. The morning of the next day, it was time to fight Fishron. Now he's pretty tough, so I wasn't sure if I was going to beat him. I buffed up, and it was showtime. The key in this fight is to do figure eights as Fishron struggles to keep up with you if you're going diagonally. I also switched to my shot bow which had much better DPS and helped getting rid of the bubbles. It also didn't help that this world was so high up as I constantly got sent into low gravity, really affecting my speed. But that's the drunk seat for you. It came in close on the second phase, but we barely won. Awesome. Anyways, back at my base, I opened up the treasure bag and on my first try I got the tsunami. Now was my time to deal with Plantera. We had another bulb spawn next to the arena as well. But before we could fight her, we needed to make one more thing in the arena, an escape tunnel. Because in her second phase, she becomes really deadly. So I bombed all my way to the surface and we were ready to start. Showtime. The fight lasted less than a minute because the Tsunami is an insanely powerful weapon, so I fought her twice. And Queen Bee, which stood even less of a chance. I was on a roll, so I went straight for Golem next. I used my Temple Key to get in, and I started making my way down, making sure to deactivate all the traps as I was going. But since this is the Drunk Seed, the temple is much larger than what it originally should be, so finding Golem's room was taking a bit of time. I eventually found it and got my weapons ready. I started by throwing Dynamite to deal with Golem's whole body and any creatures at the bottom, and then switched to my Tsunami, which just tore through his health. Since the fight was so easy, I decided to do it again seven more times. Once Golem was done, I had a solar eclipse happen. I got some cool weapons from it, by now, they weren't too useful to me anyway. During the event, a Martian probe spawned and started the Martian Madness event, which I didn't even know but can stack with a solar eclipse. On top of that, after the eclipse ended, I got a blood moon. Well, anyways, after that, I was finishing up the event and took on some Martian sources, mini bosses. In fact, I died so many times that we created a graveyard biome. After the event was over, I cleaned up my graveyard and had a look at all my loot, which was pretty cool, but there wasn't really anything there. 
necessary. Since we're now almost in endgame, it was time to get new armor set for the Lunatic Cultus and Moon Lord. So I made an artificial glowing mushroom biome in the jungle next to my other town NPCs for the truffle to move in. He sells us the auto hammer, which will give us shroomite. I also had the traveling merchant show up, so I decided to see what he had to offer, and he was selling an ammo box. I mean, it probably would have helped to get this earlier in the playthrough, but I'll still take it. Finishing up the mushroom biome, I slept in a bed to make the grass grow a bit faster, as I was pretty much done. We also had the truffle conveniently show up too, so I went ahead and bought the auto hammer. To make shroomite, you need glowing mushrooms and chlorophyte, so I went to go grab some more glowing mushrooms from a pre-existing one I had. I made my way back and then made shroomite gear. Lunatic Cultus was up next, and defeating him will cause the pillars to spawn. From there, it's a race to the finish with Moon Lord, so preparation is vital. I also made the hole to the dungeon significantly bigger and made a small arena for Cultus. We also finally got the die trader who refused to move in up until now, so I could actually go and make my character look cool. So I hit him up and got some die. Oh yeah, now we look much better. It was time to beat the game, so I killed the lunatic's followers and started the fight. Doing circles around the lunatic cultist is the way to go, as most of his attacks can be easily dodged like this. It's also important to take your time when looking for the correct cultist to shoot. You can tell by the fact that the real ones are affected by lighting more than the others. After taking him out, the pillars spawned and I went back to my base, which to my surprise was inhabited by the Stardust Pillar, which was really lucky actually, since I could take it out using the Cell Splitting Cheese. This meant that I could take the Pillar's shield out without putting myself in harm's way of the other enemies, and I did that and swiftly took out the Stardust Pillar and took its fragments. I took on the Vortex and Nebula Pillar, which took me a lot, a lot of deaths. But we eventually did it, and with the fragments from the Vortex Pillar, I crafted the Beta and the Phantasm. After all that, I also spent way too long farming more Martian events looking for the Cosmic Car Key, which I eventually got. On top of this, I also went ahead and maxed out my health with more life fruit from the jungle. I also killed an Ice Golem and made some Ice Wings. It was time to destroy the Solar Pillar, which as a ranger sucks, so I built this little box to help me spawn in a few enemies at a time. This took me a really long time, but it was better than dying over and over again, so I'll take it. After we beat the final pillar, it was a race to get home for the final fight. My lack of experience dodging and fighting this boss got the better of me, and I died on my first attempt. But I was going to beat him, so I crafted a sigil, and it was showtime. The fight got way too close for comfort, but thankfully the nurse came in clutch. It really didn't help that the arena was so close to space again, but with enough dodging, we beat him. And then I did a bit of a celebration, and got to work on making a showcase room with a few days I had left. I spent the rest of these days finishing up this build, and that's it. This was 100 days in Terraria's Drunk Seed. We managed to get so much done, and this was a really fun challenge. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next one.